to worship on this potential rainy day. So we hope that potential continues. We could, our grounds could use some moisture. Um, we're singing out of the other songbook this morning. Our opening hymn is number four. I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. first reading for this morning is from the book of 1st Kings chapter 19 verses 9 through 18. Elijah is a prophet of God and he feels that he's the only one left and he's kind of hiding out from Queen Jezebel who is has got a, a death warrant out for him. And the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. 
The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He again replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus, and when you get there, anoint Hazel king over Aram, and also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Ebal Mahoah, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escaped the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. This is the ending of our first lesson. It was just kind of a Elijah felt that he was the only one, and yet, at the end of this, God says there are 7,000 that are here. So, even though he felt all alone, he was one of many. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. And again, Paul is talking about righteousness. Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that it is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? And that is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? And that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on one in whom they are not believed? And how can they believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Here ends for today a reading of our Holy Gospel. Or our second reading, rather. Our Gospel reading today is again from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. I invite you to stand as you're comfortable this follows immediately after last Sunday's text of the feeding of the 5,000. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. 
Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were with in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and we sing hymn number 39, day by day. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This gospel text for today is again one of those very familiar ones. And I'm pretty sure that I shared with you that one of the first times I preached this text was at my home congregation at Our Saviors in McHenry. And I was standing behind the pulpit. And when it came the time that I was talking about, if I'd been Peter, I'd have grabbed on I took the top of the pulpit and it came right off in my hand as I stepped away. No security there at all, you know? And so I'm gonna check, I'm pretty sure that pulpit is still loose. I'm gonna check on that this morning when I'm up there, but I won't preach from behind it there either. But the, this text, as I mentioned before I read it, comes right after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus had had the disciples gather the leftovers and then it says that he had them get in the boat and they went off in the boat and then Jesus dismissed the crowds. If you remember last week's reading, the disciples had come to Jesus before it was time to eat and said, you need to dismiss these crowds and send them home. But Jesus took care of the needs of the people before he dismissed them. And then after he dismissed the, the crowds as today's lesson begins, 
he went up on the mountain to pray. And that's the first important lesson I take from this reading today, is that it's important for us to take time to pray, to talk to God, to give thanks to God, to pour out our hearts, to seek that strength and encouragement that comes from prayer. And we see Jesus praying on a fairly regular basis through the Gospels. Often he goes up on the mountaintop to pray. Or on the night of his betrayal, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, as it said, was his, was his you know, kind of a custom that he would go and he would pray in these certain places. But to take that time for prayer. And so often, I think our prayer list is you know, kind of more requests and requires and sometimes demands on God. But often too, we remember to give him thanks and praise for so many blessings that we have. One of the blessings we're gonna pray for, especially in McHenry today, will be the blessing of a birth, a child, a great grandchild, a you know, grandchild, but this little baby girl was born just on, on the ninth then. So a part of the prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving for life and for all of the promises that life holds. But Jesus taking time to pray, taking time to be alone to pray, is again a reminder of when Jesus said, don't be like the Pharisees and proudly pray out so everybody can see you, but go and pray privately and tell God what your, what your concerns are. Come to God with a humble heart, knowing that God hears. And that's another promise that we have, is that when we pray, when we take that time to deliberately seek God out and spend some time in prayer, that he hears our prayer. And as Jesus went up on that mountain to pray, it says it was evening. So it wasn't quite yet dark. And then it, as we read in the Bible, it said that during the fourth watch. So this is just before the break of day. Just, just as the false dawn is beginning to come, Jesus goes walking on the water toward the disciples. He knows where they are. And he knows that this whole time they've been out, the wind and the waves have been against them. In Matthew chapter 8, a while back, we had the reading of, of the storm-tossed boat with Jesus sleeping in the boat and the disciples fearing that they were going to be swamped and drowned and they wake Jesus, Master, don't you care that we are perishing? And as Jesus calms the wind and the waves, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? As Jesus comes to the boat, and as Peter and Jesus get back into the boat, and the wind ceases, now it is truly you are the Son of God. Quite a change from who is this that even the wind and the waves obey to truly you are the Son of God. And this is our profession. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, you know. That he is the Son of God, come into this world because of God's grace, because of God's knowing that we can't be righteous on our own, that we are utter failures at following the law. But as Jesus came to the boat, I think about that. Jesus coming to the boat in this early dawn, and some of these guys are fishermen, and how many, how many myths and how many fantasies and how many Loch Ness monsters and spirits are roaming the seas and as they see this apparition that they cannot make out as Jesus they think it's a ghost a spirit and they're filled with fear so often in our lives we have that fear as well the fear of the unknown as we're waiting from a for a diagnosis from the doctor as we're waiting for so many things, the fear of the unknown, the uncertainty of what lies ahead. And when we take that time as Jesus did to seek God in prayer, it will ease our hearts and it'll ease our minds and give us some peace in knowing that regardless of what happens, we are in God's hands. So they see this apparition coming 
and they're filled with fear and they cry out. Jesus hears them and responds. It, you know, he says, take heart, be of good courage, don't be afraid. It's, it's, it is I, it's me. And Peter then says, if it is you, command me to come. You know, he's, he isn't just asking Jesus to tell him to walk on the water, but he's pretty much demanding, command me to come. And, Pete, and Jesus responds with just a single word, come. And as G Peter gets out, he realizes that he's in over his head. You know, he walks, and it says he realizes the wind is against him. And I think about that with the wind and the waves. You know, the waves can get pretty deep. But the wind was against him, and he realized what was going on. And he began to sink. And so often in our lives, when we try to do everything on our own, when we try to take care of it ourselves, or like the two-year-old learning to tie my shoes, I do it myself, and it takes how many tries? How long does it take? How much patience does it take as a parent to allow that to happen? And I think that's another reminder for us that when we come to God in prayer and we ask for specific things, which we always do. We have these prayers of petition prayers where we come to God and ask. It doesn't mean that we're going to have that granted immediately. And sometimes it's so that we can grow. Sometimes it's a no or a not yet. But yet we know that God hears and that God is our safety. And that no matter what's going on in our lives, God is reaching out that hand for us. And that we don't have to hang on to that hand. You know, it's, you know, if you've ever walked along with one of your children or a grandchild and, and they're just hanging on to a finger, it's really easy for them to let go of that finger. But if you have a hold of their hand, it's easier for you to hold on. And this is what God would have for us. Rather than you and me just hanging on loosely and so able to let go, God has us firmly, firmly in his grasp of love and grace. He's there watching over us and knowing what we need. But yet, but yet things don't always happen as we would wish. I talked with a man one time who had been diagnosed with cancer. And I asked him, so what are you going to do? And he said, I believe that God will heal me. He said, so you're going to have surgery, you're going to have chemo, you're going to do any treatments? No, he said, I believe that God will heal me. He wasn't just simply talking about healing in this life, because he died from his cancer. But he knew that God promised that in heaven, there is no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow. He knew that even though he wouldn't be healed in this life, his healing would be complete in God. This is him crying out just as Peter, Lord save me. The faith that that man had is a quite an example, I think, of trusting in the love of God. Trusting that when we share our cares and our concerns, our fears with God, he knows what they are. And we don't have to just say and wonder, who is this? That even the wind and the waves obey, but we can say with the disciples, truly, this is the Son of God in Jesus Christ. Truly that God has the power. Truly God is a gracious and loving God. When I think about Jesus in this story again, he has just fed this multitude of people and sent them away. But even though he was alone up on that mountaintop, he knew where the disciples were and he knew what was on the disciples' mind. He knew that the wind and the waves were against them. Waves. You know, it said in the Bible that immediately after Jesus and Peter got in the boat, the wind ceased doesn't say in this time that the waves seized as well. 
I think about waves, you know, as you look at a smooth, glassy body of water and you throw a pebble out into it, it makes ripples. And those ripples are deeper, right close, and then they taper off as they go. But those ripples don't end until they get completely to shore. I remember being at Red Willow Lake, swimming down at Sandy Beach. And if a speedboat went by close to the shore, we'd get big waves and we would get rocked. But if that same boat went by quite a ways further out in the water, by the time the waves gave, they were just a gentle rocking wave. And so it is with the waves in our lives. Sometimes they're real deep and they rock and they hit us hard. But in time, in time those waves taper off and get so that they don't throw us quite so off balance. At times those waves become just that little ripple. But then again, all of a sudden, there'll be a big one that'll come. And it again throws us for a loop. But in and through all of those waves and the ripples and the turmoils that come in our lives, God is always there, knowing what's going on in our lives, knowing that we need his help and his guidance, knowing that we can't walk through all of those things on our own. We're blessed with family, friends, community, and we're blessed to have God walking along our side. Amen. Our offering plate remains in the entry. We sing our response. We give thee what thy As we come to God in prayer today, uh, I'm going to include Brad on our prayers. He's healing, but, you know, probably should include Jan, too. <laughs> yeah, so we're glad to hear that surgery went well and, and things are healing that way. Um, I'm going to pray for Maui. Um, uh, you, you, you read about the devastation there and how oh, like Lahaina is just basically completely destroyed in just, you know, no time. And the last I read that there are at least 80 confirmed that have died and many more missing. And, you know, I think about that fire on one of the Hawaiian islands. It just doesn't seem like with all of that water and all of that, but, you know, there's brush and there's trees and a lot of things that can burn and terrible devastation. Um, so, any other prayer requests this morning? For a family of Irby Hopwood. Irby Hopwood? That's my stepfather's brother. He's not doing very well. Okay. Anything else? Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that your Jesus modeled for us how to pray and that he taught us the Lord's Prayer. To know that we can talk to you just as easily as we talk to our father, our mother, our brother, our sister. Actually, we can talk to you more easily so often than anyone else. We can share our innermost feelings and our thoughts, our fears, our joys. We share our lives with you, and we thank you that you hear us. We pray for our country, Lord, this United States of America. Keep it a land of freedom. Keep it a land of beauty. Keep it a, to be a land that is welcoming and open. Bless our country and bless our leaders. We pray for our peacekeepers our military, our police officers, so many who give of themselves. I, I pray each day for the safety and the 
the peace of mind for these that put themselves at, at, at risk each and every day, knowing the dangers that are out there. And I think about them, but I think also of the dangers that we face each and every day and the uncertainties. So help us, Lord, to cast all of our fears upon you and give us the courage to face each day. I give you thanks for doctors and nurses and ask that as they administer care that you would lead and guide them. We're thankful for successful surgery for Brad and pray for his healing. Pray that um, for others that have upcoming surgeries, I think of Bob and Jan are, are looking at upcoming surgeries and give them the confidence in the doctors and give the doctors the skills needed for the surgeries that are necessary that way. We pray your continued hand of healing to be upon Nolan and Shirley, Dean, Sue, Nancy, Julie, Jeannie, Martine, and so many others. Maxine, that need your healing touch, Lord. It's just every day, every day we hear of someone else that that is in need of treatments for something. So bless them and watch over them and keep them. We pray for the family of Irby Hopwood, that they would have your love and your grace, that they would count on your love and your grace, and that that would help them through the days ahead. We pray this day for all who mourn, that knowing the comfort of, of your love, knowing the promise of salvation, knowing that even if healing doesn't occur, here on this earth, that in this place we call heaven, there is no more sickness. We give you thanks for that promise. We pray all of these things, Lord, in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On this day and always, may the Lord be, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 80, Hymn of Joy. sets us up with that rest for the first three lines and then the fourth one, boom, you got to get it right. <laughs> Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.